Welcome back to Patman Garage. So I would like to take a time to make a quick video here and discuss the jump boxes since I've gotten a lot of comments about them. Uh, so I appreciate all the comments and questions. I've been trying to answer them as best I can, but uh, we'll just make a quick video and discuss uh, what all is happening here since I built them or swapped the batteries, I should say. So uh, most recently we had someone talk about how lithium is a fire hazard. I don't believe that. There's factory manufacturers using lithium batteries in cars and you can get lithium jump boxes um, out of the little small booster packs and all that. But So I don't really believe that one, but whatever. Um, other questions talked about charging and I also wanted to make a comment about how they've actually been performing. So in my test video, uh, I ran down, I swapped the that small auxiliary battery and then ran it down and then uh, jump started my wife's RX and it works for that. Uh, since then I've had two vehicles I could not jump start. Um, one of them was a Silverado, uh, five, three, the battery was like beyond dead. And, um, basically the jump boxes weren't powerful enough to jump start the truck and also, um, kind of start charging a battery too. Um, I believe that battery also had a bad cell in it too because it um, it would not accept a charge. Once I got it moved around, it wouldn't even charge up. So I think that was just a really bad battery. Um, and then finally on my truck, on Fiddy, um, the battery is located in the bed of the truck. And so I've got, you know, 20 foot long battery cables um, I also depleted that battery completely on accident and my jump boxes wouldn't start the truck either. Um, they, they tried and tried and tried, but they wouldn't do it. And it was just slow cranking. So I think in that case of being the remote battery, there just wasn't enough oomph to, to again, charge the battery and also jumpstart the vehicle. Um, and then as far as charging here, let's flip this camera around. As far as charging, um, so, you know, I still have the factory charger connecting. Um, the green status light is is based off of voltage, so I don't ever go off of that, but the, vac the bolt gauge itself still works. So, being the, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, what the lithium full charge rate is, but I believe it's somewhere around 14. Um, so I just plug them in and let them run for a little while and keep an eye on on the actual voltage of it. And we'll, uh, you know, I, I don't really have a way to know when it's completely fully charged, but for what I do, it's, you know, just make sure it's topped off. Um, and then the other part about this as well, um, so I had on, I found out on the Silverado uh, when I tried to jump start the Silverado that was super 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 dead um, that the jump boxes when they so the battery itself the one I bought has a over amperage protection built into it. So essentially what happens is you try to jumpstart a vehicle and, or, you know, whatever. We try to jumpstart it and the battery will, like, essentially turn itself off, uh, which is not very convenient given it's a jump box. So the workaround for that to reset it is to charge it back. Uh, all you have to do is initialize, plug in into the wall, start trying to charge again. And the uh, the battery will then turn itself back on internally, electronically, if that makes sense. Um, so in that regards, it's not super functional as a jump box. But again, I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. Um, so, but, you know, at the same time, it's also doing what's safe for that battery as well. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind uh, versus if you had the standard uh, lead acid 
battery that came in them, then they would, uh, you know, just go full tilt. And <laughs> if, it, if it can do it, it can do it. If it can't, it can't. But um, it's really not not much different in the in the world of either it can or it can't but when it can't it shuts itself off which is a little frustrating um but like i said as long as you know ahead of time that it's a possibility then uh, you can make an informed decision to decide if these batteries are right for you as well all right so i plugged in the second one and we're actually showing the yellow charging right now because the voltage is a little bit lower on this guy um, at the moment but so we'll just let this thing run for a little while, get it fully topped off, and then we'll unplug it. So one of the questions I had was regarding how much hotter or warmer the battery gets while charging. Uh, so I plugged this thing in, I took the battery cover off, and we'll let this thing run for about two hours or so, and we'll check it again. Uh, ambient temperature in the garage is in the 60s right now, uh, so pretty normal. Uh, well, maybe not normal for Texas, but it's not like it's super cold or super hot. Um, so it'd be a good baseline to check and see what that looks like. And uh, then we can answer some more questions after that. All right, here we go. Uh, this is two hours later, and we're just kind of checking our temperatures here. It's still showing 55 degrees. It's still cold to the touch two hours later. Um, and we're still showing yellow status here. Um, it will eventually get to red or to green. And as far as our, our output, um, continuous and peak discharge, we have 30 and 50 amps as our outputting. Um, so 50 amps is the highest output you can go. So obviously if your battery is really, really dead, this will not replace the your battery to start the vehicle in most cases. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind. This is just a booster. This is not a replacement battery. So when I worked in the body shop, I always had uh, to explain that to people that these are jumper packs. These are not replacement batteries. So... Um, yes, you can get a little bit more amperage out of a uh, lead acid battery uh, that's that s smaller size, but it's not designed to be an actual replacement battery. So don't be fooled by the fact that just because you can doesn't always mean you should. Um, so like I said, just use your best judgment and understand that this has its limitations just like everything else does. Um, like I said, overall, I think I'm happy with the purchase. Um, I bought the batteries when they were cheap enough. Um, obviously, they've gone up a little bit since I made my original video. Um, but, but again, I, I, I bought them specifically for the lighter weight use. Um, I've proven it out on the wife's car in a different video up here. Um, so, you know, it, it does work. It's just not designed to... It's not strong enough to charge a battery and start a vehicle at the same time. But honestly, my original lead acid batteries wouldn't do that either. Um, so, you know, that's that's just limitation of voltage. So you can't ever overcome that. Um, but just wanted to be as transparent as possible since I do have lots of questions about it. And I do appreciate all the comments. I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible for um, that I'm not you know, hiding that, oh yeah, this is great. And then never hear from me again. <laughs> and, um, also wanted to point out that I don't currently work in a shop. So my exposure to weak batteries is a lot less, um, than when I did work in a shop. So it's not exactly the best in my case of being able to really put this thing through the paces. Um, I might at some point let my cousin borrow one of these jump boxes and let him test it out in his shop and let him uh, see what he thinks of it as well. Um, maybe a little independent review or something like that. So so I think that covers all the questions that I had in the comments. Uh, if I missed one, please let me know. Feel free to ask me again and I will do my best to try to answer them. 
Uh, so I think we're going to wrap up on this video. So I appreciate you and I'll catch you in the next one.